So what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about effective nuclear charge. And effective nuclear charge will actually help us be able to explain and justify why certain periodic trends occur. So to start, we're going to talk about nuclear charge. Nuclear charge and effective nuclear charge are different. So in a many electron atom, so anything except hydrogen, electrons are both attracted to the nucleus, but also repelled by other electrons. So the nuclear charge is simply the atomic number. It's equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. So Z, which is the atomic number, is the nuclear charge. But then we come to what is called the effective nuclear charge. Now the effective nuclear charge is the net positive that is felt by an electron in an atom. And the effective nuclear charge is represented as Z effective. Um, and it can be found by this formula. So Z effective is equal to the nuclear charge minus the screening constant. So this formula takes into account the core electrons which shield some of the nuclear charge. So again, Z effective is the effective nuclear charge. Z is the atomic number, okay, which is the number of protons. That's the same as the nuclear charge. And S is a screening constant. Now this is usually close to the number of inner core electrons, so we are just going to use core electrons. We're not going to worry about the actual value of the screening constant. We're just going to worry about core electrons. So to calculate effective nuclear charge, we take the number of protons, same as atomic number, minus the number of core electrons. So for example, if we look at sodium, okay, the sodium nucleus contains 11 protons. The atomic number is 11. And then each of the 11 electrons is attracted to the positively charged nucleus. Um, but then some of the sodium electrons screen the outermost electrons. So to figure out core electrons and everything, you can write the electron configuration. So sodium's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So to calculate effective nuclear charge, we first take the number of protons, same as the atomic number, which is 11. We also figure out how many core electrons we have. Core electrons um, are all of the completely filled energy levels. So we have from 1s to 2p. So we have 10 core electrons. So we take 11 minus 10 and we get plus 1. That is the effective nuclear charge of sodium. Now, as we talk about periodic trends, um, effective nuclear charge also has a trend. So as you go across a series, okay, or across a row, so a series um, is the same as a period or a row. Well, effective nuclear charge increases as we go across a row. So from lithium to beryllium to boron, all the way to neon, okay, Z effective increases. The reason that this increases is because the core electrons stay constant. Notice your value of S is the same, okay, because the completely filled energy level before is the 1S. So these all have two core electrons, but the nuclear charge increases, right? We're adding a proton every time. So because our nuclear charge increases, the electrons are held closer and they're held tighter by the nucleus as we move across, uh, and so your Z effective increases. So then as we go down a group, so as we go down a group, um, the effective nuclear charge is fairly constant going down a group, but it actually increases slightly because the core electrons are actually spread out over a larger space and therefore they don't screen the valence electrons as well because they're spread out. Um, so a large nuclear charge uh, makes it harder for an electron core to shield the outermost electrons. So it slightly increases as you go down a group. 
So just to check, so pause the video, see if you can answer this question. So how does the effective nuclear charge experienced by the valence electrons vary going from left to right across a period? Well, going from left to right across a period, uh, nuclear charge increases while the number of electrons is constant. And so this increases the effective nuclear charge. Okay, so some practice exercises. So see if you can go through A through F and calculate the effective nuclear charge of the following atoms. So pause the video right now. See if you can um, calculate the effective nuclear charge. I will tell you that writing the electron configuration first will help you in determining the number of core electrons. So sodium is plus one. You have 11 protons. The atomic number is 11 minus 10 core electrons. Um, sulfur has 16, uh, 16 electrons, right? So there's 16 protons, so 16 electrons. Um, and so it's plus six. Chlorine is plus seven. Silicon is plus four. Carbon is plus four. And lithium is plus one. So remember, you take Z, which is your number of protons, it's also equal to electrons, minus number of core electrons. That gives you your effective nuclear charge. So instead of all of these being electrons, we, could, we should say these are protons. So instead of electrons, these should be protons. Okay, and then the last question, uh, which would you expect to have a greater effective nuclear charge, a 2p electron of a neon atom or a 3s electron of a sodium atom? And calculate Z effective to help defend your answer. So pause this, see if you can answer the question, and then come back and check your answer. Well, if we calculate the effective nuclear charge of neon, we find that it is plus 8. Right, we have 10 protons minus 2 core electrons is plus 8. Sodium is plus 1. So therefore, the 2p electron of neon will experience a greater effective nuclear charge. It will have a much larger net positive felt on the nucleus. So that is it for effective nuclear charge. Um, if you have questions, I would recommend just taking a quick look at your book. Um, read about effective nuclear charge. That way, as we talk about periodic trends, you are ready to go.